Hello, and welcome to My Adventure Reborn, a series of videos exploring the vast lore of Maple Story through the journey of our rising hero, Rog Slayer. This series tracks my warrior's progression as I attempt to become a mighty paladin and one by one defeat the many quests and bosses from Henzies to Tenebris and beyond. I'm reinventing the way I play by intentionally slowing the leveling process to complete the quests in each region and discover more about the story behind the game I've always loved. I hope you learn something along the way and do enjoy. Now, like any great explorer, our journey began on Maple Island. I decided to forgo the tutorial quests, because I've done them probably a dozen times and was excited to move on to Victoria Island to become a warrior and uh, start the quests I've never done. So equipped with some of Dances with Balrog's elementary techniques and this nice short sword, I headed out to gain some skill points. I wanted to max War Leap as soon as possible so I could get around more efficiently and quest faster and hopefully find some gear in the process. But uh, just as I hit, I think, 15, this researcher Bruce offered me my first quest. It seems like his investigation pertains to the stone golems and the many variants that inhabit the temple here within the Windflower Forest. And to retrieve their rubble for Bruce, I had to kill around 25 or 30 of each, which was actually pretty cool. I usually just rush to 25 at golems and leaves, so I'd never actually seen these awesome frost variants, and uh, they look pretty epic. So after finishing up, I was heading back to town to sell my loot when I noticed this quest line from Dances with Balrog, and being a warrior, I figured Perion was the perfect place to head next. Dances with Balrog's quest line is actually pretty interesting. It's primarily about two objectives, that's bonding with allies in Perion and completing tasks to aid the city in the process. He starts off by connecting you with this young woman named Ion, who apparently isn't originally from Perion, but here's the crazy thing. So, I search her name up on Google after, because I'm looking for the lore, and I find out she's actually the long-lost daughter of Bruce. Yeah, like Bruce, the guy we just talked to. So I thought that was a pretty cool little detail. She starts you on this short series of kill quests to retrieve needed supplies like firewood and axes from the monsters around the northern Rocky Mountains. Uh, then that's when I ran into uh, Winston. So he basically wants you to gather more supplies like axes from the dark axe stumps. And that's when I noticed this teleport quest pop up above my head. Now, I, I really actually did not want to take the quest because I wanted to do this kind of linearly, like finish the storyline here in Perion. But after a couple of minutes, I was so annoyed by this quest bubble above my head that I just decided to finish the one I was on, uh, then head off and see what this was all about. So I get teleported to the Six Path Crossway where Sugar, yeah, Sugar, our friend from Maple Island, who has apparently now advanced to become a young magician, is freaking out because this giant bug. And uh, she basically wants you to kill the bug with no context as to <laughs> what it is or why uh, she's freaked out about it. You'd think that a, a magician with like magic claw would be able to dispatch this herself, but whatever. So I kill it and she brings up this conversation about how the tree next to us, this grand tree, is sick and weeping from the bug's damage. That apparently the bug had injured the tree in some way. And that I needed to seek out medicine from Subtrauma of Sleepywood. Because I guess only he can provide this cure. So I speak with Subtrauma and he tells me to make the medicine I must retrieve one critical missing ingredient which is this special type of plant called the Elvera fruit that grows in an area called close to the wind which is just north of Alinea um, for those of you who don't know Alinea is actually the town of elven mages and this powerful wizard Grindel the really old who basically trains every mage in the Maple Story universe so he teleports me straight there and I grab it, which I was thinking is really convenient, but it's kind of also a big part of why players don't actually explore the maple world like they did prior to the Six Path Crossway and Hyper Teleport Rocks. You notice I actually avoid Hyper Teleport Rocks for most of this because I just, I really want to explore every region thoroughly and maybe make some cool discoveries on my own. So 
I retrieve the potion and head back, where Sugar accepts it and uses it to cure this tree. But the weird thing is, she acts super weird and starts talking about how there's this imminent darkness looming. And she actually says, something terrible is going to happen to the maple world. And doesn't say why, but implies she knows more and that she'll tell us later before she runs off. I don't know, I figure I'll learn more about it later, so I decide to head back to Perion and finish my questline with Winston, who's becoming seemingly distressed and distrustful of the smiling ghost stumps in the region. He wants to find out more about them, and so he sends me to this area called Gusty Peaks to collect samples, where I run into this dual blade. Funny enough, we have a short little conversation. I, guys, I love running into new players and random non-meta maps. I think it's just the funniest thing. It really shows that they're not these, like, vet players. Like, why else would they be in this map if they knew better? But, you know, I'm always hoping I can run into some good friends like I did when I was younger and hopefully make some cool relationships. So, after speaking with Winston, it seems he believes the samples will aid in his research, but he's still very unsure as to why these stumps have become haunted ghost stumps in the first place. So he asks me if I'm agreeable, you know, he wants to make sure that I'm not some psychopath, uh, then asks me to deliver a letter of his along with some samples to an informant for the Sangus Knights named Ten Boogies, who looks like a young girl to me, but I don't know. Boogie's already heard about me, uh, I guess my first couple quests, I've made quite a name for myself here in Perion, and she informs me that the plants in Perion are slowly drying out which is odd, and that I should tell Winston. As you guys can see here, Winston seems to believe this is completely unrelated to the weather, and likely the result of something far more sinister going on in Perion. I was trying to think of who might be responsible for this, but it seems so minor that it can't be related to the Black Mage or more major evil characters, but whatever. I grabbed the samples for Winston, and uh, decided to bring him back over, thinking he's probably going to tell me who is responsible for this. Sure enough, as soon as I give the samples to Winston, he analyzes them and tells me that he is positive that Stumpy, who I guess was once this guardian tree spirit of Perion, has now become corrupted from some energy and turned into a terrible monster who's literally draining Perion of its water and life force. He warns me Stumpy's quite dangerous and that I should head to Gusty Peaks and dispatch him to save the city. I returned to Gusty Peaks, but I didn't see Stumpy anywhere. I figured he might be one of these uh, channel bosses like Mush Mom, so I CC'd and sure enough, there he was. I don't know what he looked like before, but it was clear that anything that was once good about him was now likely gone and this wasn't the way things should have ended. But with two slash blasts, he was gone. I actually thought he was a pretty cool boss, even though he was easy. Most Maplers probably won't see any of these bosses besides, I don't know, maybe Dojo, so it's a cool opportunity to find out about these minor bosses, and I, I would have had no idea that that boss in Dojo was supposed to be an ancient guardian tree spirit of Perion, so Cool little detail you learned from actually doing the quests here, and part of the reason I did this series. Now, after dispatching him, Winston and Ten Boogie seem quite satisfied. They're happy with me and seem to think that Perion will be able to continue. So as you guys can see, I'm jumping around here because I figured there was probably more quest lines here in Perion. I checked in with Dances with Balrogs, but there was nothing available, and I actually checked the portal up at the top of the map, but still no quest. At this point, I was pretty sure that there was nothing left, but just to make sure I didn't miss anything, I basically jumped around the entire map looking for any NPCs that might have a task for me, uh, including Mr. Smith, which I knew they wouldn't have any tasks, but I wanted to see if they actually still let you craft items, which they don't because you obviously can't get ores the same way anymore. Kinda sad. I jump up, one last check with Manji, and realize there's nothing left. So with that, I guess Perion can rest. At least until I'm a little stronger to take on greater tasks. 
kind of a tragic story here about Stumpy, but I do believe that in finishing this quest line, I've completed Black Bull's objective of forging new allies in Perion and growing stronger. So with second job advancement on the horizon, my gear improving, I headed to Henzies to see about helping its citizens. And that's where we're going to leave it. Until next episode. And that concludes episode one. If you guys found out anything new about the game or interesting from this quest line, please give this video the thumbs up. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe and consider recommending it to a Mapler you know so they can enjoy it too. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback, so please leave a comment below telling me what your favorite low-level quest line is and which one you think I should start next. Until next time, happy mapling.